Hi everyone. Uh, today I wanted to share my experience within the Rexis Vexis program that I was involved with uh, last year. So what is what is Rexis Vexis? So Rexis stands for Rocket Experiment for University Students, and Vexis I will let you guess it stands for Balloon Experiment for University Students. So basically, it's a partnership between SNSB, the Swedish National Space Board, DLR, the German agency, and ESA, that allows university students, European and university students, to launch an atmospheric or microgravity experience into a board, a sounding rocket, or a balloon. So basically, there are usually two rocket launches and two balloon campaigns per year, so it can send up to 20 experiments student experiments. So I was involved, I, I mean, my experiment flew on uh, Rexis 15, so it was launched in uh, last May from Ace Ranch. So I'm going basically to give you more of a point of view from the Rexis side of Rexis Bexis. So here's our rocket. This is actually rocket Rexis 15. Uh, the length is of a rocket is 5.6 meters, its diameter is uh, 35.6 centimeters. A board you can have up to five ex student experiments and a fifth one in the nose cone. The, uh, the maximum apogee of this rocket is 90 kilometers, so we were quite heavy, so I think we only went to 80 kilometers. We seen the orange rectangle, it's actually the experiment uh, my team designed, which is called Isaac. So I don't really have time to get into details about Isaac, but very basically we had uh, two free-falling units, FFUs, that we had to eject within the mesosphere, so around 60, 70 kilometers. And so one of the FFU was going to be sp was spinning. So actually the rocket is spinning. So when you launch your FFU, when you eject your FFU, they are also spinning, three Earth spinning, so it helps stabilizing. And we had to do spectroscopy between the two FFUs. So one of them was the emitter, so it had LEDs all around, it was spinning. And the other one was the receiver, so it had like, um, uh, half, part, half of the FFU was spun, so it had a motor that <laughs> was going to be uh, triggered after the ejection to, to, yeah, to, to have like an immobile uh, part. And it had like so a tracking algorithm to find the other FFU in the sky, point at it, and get the signal from the LEDs and perform some spectroscopy. So yeah, that was actually the, <laughs> the main first goal. Well, unfortunately, we didn't really uh, had time to finish this in one year. But another experience, another team from my university, which is, by the way, the KTS University from Stockholm, is going to fly the same experience, and we hope finish it for the next launch next year. So that's basically the aim. that was basically the aim of my experience. So what's so awesome, awesome about this program, and why you so joined? So first of all, this is a real if this is your real first own space project. So we, you really get a chance to make your own design. So I was in charge of the ejection system. So that's what you can see here on the screen. So on the left, it's what we presented at the selection workshop in November 2012. So as you can see, it's a bit like, <laughs> so you can see the two FFUs on top of each other, and there's uh, this orange part that's going to push away the blue part. A lot of magic happens, so it's going to be ejected. A few months after, we presented this uh, really more developed design that you can see in the middle at the um, critical design review. So this is a bit more precise. You can see the pyro cutter on the top. And after a few months of manufacturing and final design, we came up with this um, on the right picture of this final experiment. So actually, you cannot see the FFUs here, but you see, well, you can still see the uh, pyro cutter. The, um, Actually, you can see have your hatch. The hatch were quite big, actually, so it's 80 centimeter wide, uh, I mean, height, and uh, 240 centimeters of wide. So actually, ESA experts were quite um, <laughs> unsure about uh, the stiffness of our module and quite a bit afraid of what would happen at the launch, but we had to do some FEM modulation and prove that it would survive the launch, and it did, hopefully. No. <laughs> So yeah, great, 
this program is a great opportunity to connect with uh, space experts from several agencies, so you have um, concrete feedback from um, experts from ISA, DLR, SNSB, also ZARM, so the people from the Drop Tower in Bremen. Actually, on the top picture on the right, this is the vibration, um, vibration test setup. So we have our RMU, rocket mounted unit, on it. This is also the opportunity for you, for all the students, to develop new skills, like Usually when you, when you study, you, you maybe not have the opportunity to have a concrete experience to do your own stuff. So for me, it was, for example, the first times that I could actually manufacture my own parts, so it was a really great experience. And, well, <laughs> that's already a lot of reason to join this program, I hope. And actually, my favorite part was all the traveling around. So our best camp was actually in uh, Stockholm. In Sweden, we were all master students from the KTH University. Uh, for the selection workshop, we traveled to ESTEC in Nordvik. Then for the, critical, the, the preliminary design review and the critical design review, we traveled to Hobenfaffenhofen in uh, Germany. And uh, finally, for the integration week, we went to the drop tower in uh, Bremen. So that's actually uh, one of my few of my team members and me on top of the drop tower in Bremen. They actually have a very nice bar on the top of it. I don't usually say it. Until it was, um, well, the most exciting moment of this project was, of course, the launch campaign, which uh, is uh, in Kiruna, so it's uh, somewhere, in, um, somewhere in Swedish Lapland when you don't risk hitting anyone with a sonic rocket. So it's basically nothing around the Estrange Space Center. And this is actually Paxi from ESA waiting for the launch. So actually I have, the, I have the launch video because we had a GoPro on the rocket. So you're going to be able to see this. Actually, it's more like a six, a strong six. <laughs> so this is, this is a view from the rocket, you're on the rocket. So we showed this after the launch party. We had a huge party after the launch. And we showed this the day before. Everybody was hangover. It was a really bad idea. But, but for you, I cut it a bit. <laughs> So look at the bottom corner on the right, you're going to see the ejection of the FFU. Yeah, and here it goes. Quite a few students working on this experiment. Yeah. <laughs> a very international team, actually. There was no Swedish students when we went on the to the selection workshop. Voilà. So now it's your turn. I mean. If you want to join, you can, either if you're a teacher, you can uh, build up a team of students and um, send your proposal either to ESA or to DLR. And if you're, of course, students, you're also welcome to join this program. If you want to know more, uh, well, go on rexbexes.net. Thank you.
Thank you, Audrey. Um, any questions from the audience? Thanks, Audrey. I, I think it's really always impressive to see how, how students put so much dedication into their own projects and how really this, this fascination for doing something in space um, generates ideas well beyond what, what we thought before. Um, I was just wondering, when, when looking at your experiment, did you actually look at, did you recover also the ejected units from the rocket? Well, in this case, uh, unfortunately, we could not launch the real FFU, so we launched dummy FFU, so there was no point in uh, going together. But of course, um, so East French, East French provides you uh, two helicopters, one that is going to get the main payload, which is the rocket, and one that is in charge of recovering the FFUs. So usually you have uh, a GPS uh, or a beacon in your FFU and you couldn't find it, if you're lucky. <laughs> well, I know that also, um, actually, and maybe that is uh, an idea for you as well. I, I know from uh, earlier teams that participated to the Rexus program, actually, that went back to Kiruna in summer and, and yes, just did yes. some hiking around it's a case the of field ACC, to see if yeah. they can find some stuff. I think one of the experiments, they, they finally they found their payload like 10 years after the launch. Out of like, because this is super big, I mean, and it's all swamps and, yeah. <laughs> Any other questions? <laughs> With the experience that you had doing this project, what would you do differently if you were to do it again? Um, I think we spent too much time maybe on the design part. It's uh, sometimes it's really tough to like say stop, then we stop, and we just start manufacturing and doing it. It's a bit scary, you know. Like uh, you're like, okay, now we stop, and we really do start doing something concrete. So, but you have to do it at some point. All right, thank you. Somebody else with a question? Um, you showed in the video that you had a big international team. Yeah. Was that the team for your project alone? And can you describe how you were working together? If you're international, what, you know, you cannot be physically together. Can you give a bit oh, more information? Uh, actually, there? yeah. So we were a bit, we were okay, we were international, but most of all the students were actually uh, part of a master program in uh, KTH. So we we're all physically at the same place. It's true that sometimes it was a bit hard, like for summer when everybody went to their home, uh, home uh, country. That was a bit tough, but we managed like through Skype or uh, like remotely to work remotely together. And actually the core team was like uh, five people in the beginning and all the names you saw is uh, like, for example, a bachelor students that joined us for one semester or so on. 